It's Vipers Voices after the first match of the Desert Vipers campaign in the DP World ILT20 for 2024, a match against the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, and it's ended in defeat. The Knight Riders coming home by six wickets with just over two overs to spare. I've got Director of Cricket Tom Moody alongside me. Tom, thanks very much for joining us. A frustrating start to the campaign, I guess. Yeah, look, it's not what you'd like to you know start with you know ideally you want to get off to a, a winning start but um, there's a lot of lessons for us to learn out of today uh, we know it's a, a long campaign and there's plenty of cricket in front of us so you know there's no point us dwelling too much on on the negatives but uh, you know, certainly we know that you know I think in heart of hearts we didn't put our best foot forward today uh, and it's a chance for us to reflect on that as a group and individually and and bounce back you talk about lessons learned there, and I guess one of the lessons is the surface. It was a new pitch for today's game, and one of the lessons seemed to be pace off was very effective. So perhaps if the Vipers had had more runs on the board, that would have been a more telling situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it was uh, a slightly different uh, surface than what I think both teams were expecting. It, it, it took a little bit of turn, but. The ball just held in the wicket a little bit, and if you held your length and changed your pace subtly, uh, there was certainly there were some opportunities as a bowling unit. Um, but from the batting perspective, I think realistically, you know, we were probably 20 short of where we should have been. Um, and when you lose a, a, a cluster of wickets in that middle phase, it's very hard to sort of rebound quickly from from that. So you need to reset gradually, and that's that's where we sort of I feel sort of felt, you know, we were probably 20 or plus runs short. Yeah, that really was the key, wasn't it? Uh, 126 for three to 127 for six. Is there anything the batters could have done differently? Um, yeah, well, there's plenty they could have done differently. I think sort of read the situation a lot better, um, uh, you know, understood, you know, certain bowlers were coming to the end of, uh, you know, their spells, you know, you know, threats like Narayan, who's a world-class operator, uh, recognising that that was his last over of a spell, so we could then sort of, um, you know, get ourselves set for those closing overs and, and hopefully come home with a breeze behind our back, so to speak. But, um, yeah, shot selection, I think, is something that uh, I'm sure the group will reflect on. Um, you know, it's something that, particularly early in the tournament, when you're looking to, you know, groove a game style, you can make mistakes like that. So there's no point jumping up and down about it, but there's certainly a, a good point to reflect and learn from it. And Ali Khan was a very effective bowler for the Knight Riders, wasn't he? As their sixth bowler used, right arm fast, ran the wicket. He got those Yorkers right, and he was very difficult to come to terms with, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And a again, I think if we had our time again, we probably would have approached it slightly differently. Um, and it's not like he changed he, he changed anything. He was pretty predictable once he went with that line of approach where he's looking to create that steep angle across the right hander. And as you said, he was he was basically looking to hit the block hole more often than not, uh, with the you know protected field uh, you know through point and down to to third man. Um, you know, again, that's one of the lessons that can be learnt from the bowling group if you if you're faced with that situation again. How would you look to approach it? Uh, next time round, and I'm sure there, you know, we would have completely different answers to what approach we took out there. So, you know, again, that's just one of many uh, points that uh, I'm sure that the the coaches and the and and the batting group will discuss uh, over the next few days. It was a funny sort of beginning to the Vipers innings, wasn't it? Because there was fluency at, initially from Alex Hales and Colin Munro. One mistake only from them, and that was the end of the news as far as they were concerned. Where did you place that first power play, really, 56 for two? Yeah, I thought we were you know, pretty well set, to be honest with you. Ideally, you'd like to be no wickets down, but you know, at the end of the day, um, the reality is you're always potentially going to lose one or two, but you, you don't want to be losing any more, uh, certainly, than two in that power play. But we got off to a good start. You know, Alex Howell's got one that sort of stayed in the wicket a little bit. You know, therefore, he's threw his shot a little bit earlier than he would have hoped. But you know, at the end of the day, that you know, that message was communicated to the dugout that the ball was just holding in the wicket, particularly if you took a little bit of pace off the ball. Um, it, uh, it was challenging for the, you know, for the batting group, um, particularly those coming to the crease early on. In terms of positives, and let's talk positives for the Vipers uh, today, Tamal Mills was 
really, really impressive with the ball and, uh, and Adam Hose to an extent with the bat as well. Yeah, look, uh, Mills was exceptional, again, showing his vast experience. You know, he's been around a long time, played a lot of uh, top line cricket and just understands how to, you know, to, to read the conditions and bowl to the conditions. And, uh, you know, he showed his experience in spades. Um, unfortunately, you know, we, uh, we, we didn't really operate um, with discipline as a bowling unit. I think they'd be uh, more than happy to put their hand up and say that we bowl far too many wides and, you know, you know there's a few overs that got away from us that we should have locked down a lot better than what we did. Um, Adam Hose, uh, first, you know, first season with the, uh, the Vipers, um, showed exactly why he was sought after by us. You know, he's a very versatile cricketer, plays spin well, uh, can find the boundary when needed and um, you know I thought he played exceptionally well but again I'm sure he'll reflect on the timing of his dismissal um, you know players like uh, Adam uh, you know get set like that they want to be batting at the back end of the innings because they can be very damaging. Let's talk now ahead the next game is on Wednesday a, a repeat of last year's final against the the Gulf Giants first and foremost uh, who is uh, the, the Vipers going to be able to call upon? Because there's going to be extra players coming in in the meantime, I think. What's your understanding of that, Tom? Uh, yeah, we, we will have some extra players coming in. Shadab Khan will be available for selection. He's coming in. Um, and uh, Dennis Chandamal from Sri Lanka will be coming in as well. He played with us last season, of course. And on top of that, we've got Azim Khan uh, will be available for selection as well. So we've got... You know, slowly getting the uh, you know the house full of uh, all of our aces, so to speak, and um, you know it'll give us a, a good opportunity, to sort of you know revisit what balance we want to go with and 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 what sort of um, is required for that tough challenge in our second game. Just talk to us as well about the use of the super sub. Uh, it was Shafane Rutherford who was uh, subbed out and. Tamal Mills uh, came in. Sam Hain was the one who came in for the Knight Riders uh, to bolster their batting, mm. bolster their batting in the second innings. How did you think uh, that played out? Yeah, I like it. I think it's a pretty simple process. You're basically playing with 12 men. Um, if you're batting first, you play the the additional batter, and uh, you know when it's your turn with the ball in hand, you you sub one of your specialist batters out and and. Um, and utilise, you know, one of your specialist bowlers. So I think it's that's pretty much the, the theme that's going to happen throughout the tournament. And it may change from personnel to personnel, depending on who you're playing against and, and the conditions that, uh, that you're playing in. So, yeah, look, I think um, given that a similar um, a rule came into the IPL last year, last year, which is called the impact player, I think people are starting to get familiar with that uh, additional player. So, the next game against the Gulf Giants on Wednesday, lessons learned, no need to hit the panic button yet, it's just one game into the tournament, I guess. Yeah, look, absolutely, it's no need to hit the panic button, you, you know, we want to be playing our best cricket at the back end of the tournament. Uh, you know, we've learned a tough lesson today, we, you know, we came here to win, uh, you know, we came off second best and comfortably second best, uh, you know, that's the reality of it, and, you know, it's a chance for us to, to reflect, learn and, and uh, build on that. Tom Moody, thank you very much indeed. So that's the news down here in the Vipers' dugout. The Vipers going down by six wickets in their first match of this DP World ILT 20 2024. And they're back on the horse pretty soon on Wednesday. It's a game against the Gulf Giants. It's a repeat of last year's final. And of course, uh, we'll bring you all the uh, reaction here on Vipers' Voices.